Now we're going to take a look at using a uh, biamped cabinet. Now, what we've been using here have been these 12 gauge wires right here. And this is your regular Speak On NL4 connector. This is a 12 gauge wire. Now, if you notice here, the wire sitting next to it, right here, this is um, it's, it's a bit thicker. This is a 12 gauge wire, but this is a two conductor wire. This wire here, this is a there we go. This is a four conductor, uh, 13 gauge wire. This is designed to carry uh, two sets of signals. So this one cable here can do biamping in a rig. Uh, it's an NL4 connector, but it's got four wires going to all four pins inside of it. So whereas this one here is just a 12 gauge, two wire, this one over here is a, a 13 gauge uh, four wire. So what we're going to do is we're going to use this one big cable here to do uh, biamping into one cabinet. And this is how you uh, biamp. This is how you biamp speaker cabinets that can support um, a four wire connection to it. So what we've done down here is we have connected our our low end back up into the system. So we have the low end connected up and then we have the mid and high connected up. And as you can tell, I've got the speakers removed. But on this particular amplifier, this QSC amplifier, and uh, there's a lot of amplifiers on the market that can support this, but the biamping functionality, let's get some of this out of the way if we can, the biamping functionality uh, can all be handled through one speak on output. So I've got two connectors coming into here. This is the um, high end connector here, and down here we have the, whoop, there we go. This is the high end connector, and then down here we have the low end coming in. But both of those signals actually are going to be coming through here. So we don't actually need to use two different speaker cables unless we're using, let's say, a separate subwoofer. But if your individual speaker can do biamping, which these uh, PVQWs can do biamping within itself, all we need is one cable to come out of the amplifier. Okay, so we have greatly reduced the amount of, uh, of speaker cables. So that one cable, it's a four wire, uh, I don't know if you want to call it a composite cable, but it's a four wire cable, and it's going to be sending both low and mid and high to a uh, biampable speaker. So let's go take a look at the back of the speaker. Okay, and if you remember, this was our um, mid and high cabinet. Uh, this whole speaker cabinet here was we were using that for the mids and highs. And this was the speaker cable that was coming into it. So all we're going to do is remove this, because these are full range inputs here, which uh, the cabinet is no longer going to be used full range for this. We're actually going to be using this input up here, which is a biamp input. You can see a biamp in. And it's showing here that on um, pin 1, for both positive and negative, that's lows, and pin two is the highs. And that is what's coming in on that four wire cable that uh, we just connected in the back of the amplifier. Okay, so. There we go. So the cable is quite a bit bigger, quite a bit thicker, but it is carrying four wires. So to biamp this whole cabinet like we just did, we just need one speaker cable to do it with. So let's go listen to it. Okay, and uh, just like before, when we had two separate speaker cables coming out of it to do biamping, even though we got one cable out, these controls, the attenuators on the front, are still functional. So we're just going to set these back uh, to where they were. Gives a good, uh, good place to start. Okay, let's try that. Oh, and remember? This is handling the mids and highs. This is handling the lows. But now they're all going out just one cable and it's going to be feeding that uh, top speaker in the uh, example we've been using. Okay, now that we've got the uh, speakers, uh, pardon me, that uh, one speaker set up to do 
uh, to do biamping. We've got the uh, amplifier set up to do biamping. Now all we got to do is set our crossover frequencies. Now the difference uh, between when crossing over between two cabinets uh, is when you're crossing over within the internal cabinet it's good to see what the crossover point is that is internal to the cabinet. Uh, that should give you a fairly good baseline about where you can cross over when you're manually crossing over for a for that cabinet. So in this one, uh, let's get started here. We're going to add a little bit of input level here. Uh, put it right back up to where it was. And let's start off here. Actually, let's go over here with a low. Let's add some low. Now it is pretty low because our um, crossover points down. Okay. okay. We're going to flatten that out, the crossover point. Now, this is the uh, critical point here. So we're going to increase it, the bandwidth on the low end. Okay, that's about uh, about 200 hertz crossover point. Now this cabinet internally, I believe, crosses over about 1,200 hertz. So actually, and technically, we could increase our crossover point up to a point. Okay, there's just the horn. There just comes a point there with the horn where it cannot produce anything below a certain frequency. That's why when we turn the uh, frequency down, let me turn this down a little bit. That's why when we turn the, the uh, crossover frequency down further, we don't hear any change because the horn, it's, it's it's at its limit. But if we turn it up. So what we're going to do here. So what we're going to do here is let's change our range. Let's set our range to normal and we'll hear what it sounds like. Okay. We just set our range over here to what they're showing as normal. And let's start with our volumes down. That's always a safe thing to do. And we're going to start with a little bit of input. That's pretty high. Let's flatten that out. Now this right about here we can still control it. Let me turn that down a little bit. See, we can still control the balance of it, but right about here, it's crossed over about where it does internally on the internal crossover. But still, we can control how loud, how quiet we want it to be. So this is actually crossing over about uh, maybe 1,500, 12, 1,500 maybe. There we go. Let's mute the bass. So the horn, not doing too much. A lot of it. A lot of it's coming through the 15-inch uh, woofer. All right, well, I hope this has uh, helped you in learning how to use a analog crossover. And uh, hopefully you've seen that um, even though it's a crossover, it can be used for um, uh, a few different kind of setups. Uh, we had the, uh, in the beginning, we had the two speakers set up. One speaker was mid and high, one was low. We used crossover for that. Then we went over and used the crossover as a variable high pass filter for a full range speaker. 
uh, which is um, it's pretty good there for monitors. If you're running monitors, you want to keep uh, make sure the base doesn't hit the monitors. Uh, so you saw how to use it that way. And now you've used the crossover uh, to run a single speaker that is crossover capable uh, using a larger, um, you know, for a conductor speaker wire. So anyway, you've seen three different ways how to use a, a crossover with a different kind of speaker setups. And um, hope this has helped and uh, good luck with your show.